Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. I'm Smriti Rastogi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Russia today for a two-day visit. His visit to the Russian Far East region, Vladivostok, is the first by any Indian Prime Minister. This visit holds significance as he will also be participating in the 5th Eastern Economic Forum in Vladivostok. The Eastern Economic Forum 2019 will take place from 4th to 6th of September in Vladivostok. It is an international forum held each year since 2015 in Russia to encourage foreign investment in the Russian Far East. India's participation in the forum demonstrates its growing presence at the global stage and also how the Indo-Russian ties are gaining momentum. India and Russia have also signed 15 agreements to enhance bilateral cooperation in several areas at the 20th India-Russia Annual Summit in Vladivostok. In today's In-Depth, we will tell you what the Eastern Economic Forum is, the significance of Prime Minister Narendra Modi attending the 5th Eastern Economic Forum, and India's growing importance in the international arena and India-Russia ties. So let's begin today's In-Depth. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Russia on Wednesday on a two-day visit and he was accorded a warm welcome on arriving in Vladivostok. He received a guard of honour at the airport. This visit to the Russian Far East region is the first by an Indian Prime Minister. On Thursday, Prime Minister Modi will attend the 5th Eastern Economic Forum as the chief guest at the invitation of President Vladimir Putin. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was also welcomed by the Indian community at the Russia's Far Eastern Federal University in Vladivostok. Prime Minister Modi also held delegation-level talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Vladivostok at the 20th India-Russia Annual Summit. The two leaders discussed collaboration potential in trade and investment in the sectors of oil and gas, mining, nuclear energy, defence and security, air and maritime connectivity, transport, infrastructure, high-tech, outer space and people-to-people -people ties. Speaking at the summit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi thanked President Putin for inviting him to participate in the Eastern Economic Forum. आपने मुझे अपने देश के सबसे बड़ा नागरिक सम्मान देने की घोषणा की। उसके लिए मैं आपका और रूस के लोगों का आभारी हूँ। यह हम दोनों देशों के लोगों के बीच विशेष मैत्री संबंधों को दर्शाता है और 1.3 बिलियन भारतीयों के लिए बहुत ही सम्मान का विषय है रूस भारत का एक अभिन्न मित्र और विश्वसनीय साझेदार है हमारी स्पेशल एंड प्रिविलेज स्ट्रेटजिक पार्टनरशिप का विस्तार करने पर आपने व्यक्तिगत ध्यान दिया है दो अभिन्न मित्रों के रूप में हमारी नियमित रूप से मुलाकातें हुई हैं मैंने आपसे टेलीफोन पर कई मामलों पर चर्चा की है मुझे कभी कोई झिझक नहीं हुई आज की हमारी मुलाकातें बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है और उनका ऐतिहासिक महत्व भी है दोनों देशों के बीच यह 20वां एन्युअल समिट है पिछले लगभग 20 सालों में जब आपने रूस का किसी न किसी रूप में नेतृत्व किया है तो इस व्यवस्था ने हमारे संबंधों को 21वीं सदी के अनुरूप ढाला है और उन्हें हमारे लिए ही नहीं विश्व के लिए प्रगति शांति और स्थायित्व का एक विशेष कारक बनाया है आज हमारे बीच डिफेंस न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी 
स्पेस बिजनेस टू बिजनेस जैसे कई क्षेत्रों में अपने सहयोग को नई ऊंचाइयों तक पहुंचाने के लिए सहमति बनी है मैं हमारे संबंधों के सभी पक्षों पर आपके और आपके डेलीगेशन के साथ हमेशा की तरह उपयोगी चर्चा का अवसर पाकर बहुत ही खुश हूं फिर एक बार आज भी करीब दो घंटे हम लोगों को साथ रहने का मौका मिला और आपने मुझे कई महत्वपूर्ण विषयों से अवगत कराया और ये सारा देख करके मैं कह सकता हूं कि आपका दीर्घ दृष्टि आपका विजन और इस क्षेत्र के विकास के लिए आपका कमिटमेंट यानी जो लगाव में आपके हर शब्द में देख रहा था ये अपने आप में प्रभावित करने वाला था India and Russia also signed 15 MOUs for cooperation in connectivity, oil and gas, deep sea exploration, space, energy and others. Diamond, mining, rare earth, agriculture, timber, pulp and paper, tatha tourism mein anek nai sambhavnaye उजागर हुई है और अब क्षेत्रों के बीच कनेक्टिविटी को बढ़ाने के लिए चेन्नई और वाल्दीवस्तु के बीच मैरीटाइम रूट का प्रस्ताव भी किया गया है तीसरा हमने अपने बायोलेटर कॉपरेशन को बहुत विविधता दी है और उसमें नए आयाम जोड़े हैं हमने देखा आप पहले हमारे सीमित सत्र में बातचीत हुई उसके बाद सिस्टम अंडर स्तरीय बातचीत थी हमने अपने सहयोग के सभी आयामों पर चर्चा की और जो निर्णय लिए गए थे पिछले शिखर बैठक के दौरान नई दिल्ली में हमने इनके क्रियान्वयन की समीक्षा की और यह आज जो हमने संयुक्त वक्तव्य को अपनाया है ये इसमें प्रतिबिंबित है कई सारे समझौते आज किए गए हैं विभिन्न क्षेत्रों में और इनसे भी हमारे सहयोग और हमारे भागीदारी को और मजबूती मिलेगी हमारी प्राथमिकताएं हैं व्यापार और निवेश पिछले वर्ष हमारे द्विपक्षीय व्यापार में 17 प्रतिशत वृद्धि हुई 11 अरब डॉलर तक ये पहुंच गया और हमारी उम्मीद है कि इसे हम और काफी बढ़ा सकते हैं हमारा जो आर्थिक सहयोग है यह हमारी सहयोग रणनीति की प्राथमिकता है जिसे हमने आज अपनाया अर्लियर इन द डे प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी पेड विजिट टू स्वेस्ट शिपिंग शिप बिल्डिंग कॉम्प्लेक्स अलॉन्ग विद रशियन प्रेसिडेंट व्लादिमिर पुतिन इन अ स्पेशल जेस्टर प्रेसिडेंट पुतिन डिसाइडेड टू अकम्पनी प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी बोथ लीडर्स डिस्कस्ड वेज टू डीप इन को ऑपरेशन इन शिप बिल्डिंग The visit was aimed at learning about Russia's exemplary capabilities in the shipbuilding sector as well as to explore possibilities of cooperation in this area. And Russia is holding the 5th edition of the Eastern Economic Forum in Vladivostok from 4th to 6th of September. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will attend the forum as the chief guest on the direct invitation of Russian president. The forum seeks to attract foreign investment to support development of Russia's far east, a vast area which is resource rich but highly underdeveloped. Here are more details. The Eastern Economic Forum 2019 will take place from 4th to 6th November in Vladivostok. This is the 5th edition of the forum. The Eastern Economic Forum is an international forum held each year since 2015 in Russia to encourage foreign investment in the Russian Far East. It is held at the campus of the Far Eastern Federal University in Vladivostok every year. The forum was established in 2015 with an aim to support economic development in Russia's Far East. President Putin has designated the development of the country's Far East as a national priority of the entire 21st century. The forum seeks to expand international cooperation in the Asia-Pacific region, 
Every year, the Eastern Economic Forum serves as a platform for discussion of key issues facing the world. These issues include world economy, regional integration and the development of new industrial and technological sectors. The forum focuses on global challenges facing Russia and other nations. The forum's business program includes business dialogues with leading partner countries in the Asia-Pacific region and with ASEAN. Representatives from a wide range of industries also participate in the forum. An organizing committee appointed by Ross Congress, an association of the Russian government, sponsors and manages the forum. The Eastern Economic Forum is a platform that uh, Mr. Uh, Putin has created uh, or, uh, and has been trying to use for the development of uh, Russia's Far East, which is a huge uh, geographic landscape but is very sparsely populated and is given its climatic conditions, it's very cold uh, and it's very inhospitable. So the, the challenge for Russia has been that it remains a frontier area for Russia where not many Russians live. Uh, and so it remains very underdeveloped compared to rest of the country. So what uh, through Eastern Economic Forum, uh, Mr. Putin would like is to make uh, Russia's Far East investor friendly, uh, invite other countries to participate in the developmental projects there, invest there, infra build infrastructure, uh, so that uh, the region which is a huge part of Russia can become integrated economically more into the Russian main mainland and uh, takes the level of um, standards uh, standards of living higher for uh, for ordinary russians as as well as for the entire russian economy this year india is the chief guest at the eastern economic forum in vladivostok looking for investment opportunities in the russian far east region Far Eastern Federal District is twice the size of India and is rich in resources. Russia needs the help of Asian countries other than China to develop this region. The resource-rich region can fulfill India's energy needs, and Russia is keen to balance Chinese presence in its Far East through Indian investments and manpower. Russia and the West, they deteriorated, and uh, President Putin also felt that the gravity, economic gravity of the world was moving from the west to the east. So he started to develop the eastern part. So this is the Eastern Economic Forum. Actually, it takes place in Vladivostok, which is the capital of this region. Uh, the region is very vast in terms of uh, uh, its territorial size, territorial area. It's about more than 6 million square kilometers. So if you compare it even to India, it is about twice the size of India, but in terms of population, it's very sparsely populated. It has just about 8 million people, which means less than half of the population of Delhi NCR. Along with India, Japan, China, South Korea, North Korea, Singapore, Indonesia, Mongolia are participating in the forum. In a message ahead of the 5th Eastern Economic Forum, Russia's Deputy Prime Minister and Presidential Envoy to Russia's Far Eastern Federal District, Yuri Petrovich Trutnev, said a lot has been accomplished during the last five years. This includes 20 advanced special economic zones and five free ports, over 1,780 new investment projects worth over 3.8 trillion rubles, 230 new enterprises, over 70,000 people have received free land and are now building houses and farms on their far eastern hectares. 17 different countries are investing in the far east, including China, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Australia, New Zealand and Vietnam, among others. Through the Eastern Economic Forum, both India and Russia are hoping to create the foundation for a concrete Indo-Russian partnership in the Indo-Pacific region. With inputs from Vipul Agarwal, Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Russia has been a long-standing and time-tested partner for India. In fact, developing India-Russia relations has been a key pillar of India's foreign policy. In 2017, India and Russia completed 70 years of diplomatic relations. In our next report, let's take a look at the Indo-Russia ties. India established diplomatic relations with the Soviet Union shortly before independence in 1947. The announcement in this regard was made on 13th April that year. 
In the period immediately following independence, the goal for India was attaining economic self-sufficiency through investment in heavy industries. The Soviet Union invested in several new enterprises in the areas of heavy machine building, mining, energy production and steel plants. During India's second five-year plan of the 16 heavy industry projects set up, eight were initiated with the help of the Soviet Union. This included the establishment of the world-famous IIT Bombay. While Indo-Russian relations were established just before independence, it began to blossom only in the 1960s and 70s. A watershed moment in relations between India and the Soviet Union was the signing of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship in August 1971. The deep roots of Indo-Russia relationship goes back to the early 20th century when India was under British rule and the Tsars ruled Russia. Following the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution, Soviet leaders encouraged India to become free and independent. Many Indian freedom fighters who were greatly inspired by the Bolshevik Revolution established personal contacts with these Soviet leaders. The year 1955 was critical for Indo-Soviet relations, marking the first exchange of summit-level interaction between the two countries. At the international level, Soviet Union used its veto power twice to block anti-India initiatives on Jammu and Kashmir in the United Nations Security Council, first in February 1957 and then in June 1962. In 1961, the Soviet Union stood by India as it liberated Goa from Portuguese rule. The 90s were a tumultuous period for both countries during which economic activity declined, cultural cooperation collapsed, collaboration in technology and military slid down. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, India and Russia entered into a new treaty of friendship and cooperation in January 1993 and a bilateral military technical cooperation agreement in 1994. In 2000, during the visit of President Putin to India, the partnership acquired a new qualitative character of a strategic partnership. During the 2010 visit of then-President Dmitry Medvedev, the relationship was elevated to the status of a special and privileged strategic partnership. India's relationship with Russia continues to evolve. In 2014, energy was the primary focus of the annual summit. Prime Minister Modi and President Putin agreed to set up new nuclear plants in India and envisaged broader collaboration between hydrocarbon companies of the two countries in oil and gas exploration and production. Both leaders also agreed to set a concrete target of bilateral trade turnover of goods and services at 30 billion US dollars for the next 10 years. This was the first annual summit meeting between India and Russia after Narendra Modi took over as Prime Minister. Another decision was to explore substantial opportunities for utilization of information technologies for technological interaction between the business communities of the two countries. The decision was a departure from the past when discussions in IT were mainly about the need to provide international information security and promote intergovernmental cooperation in this field. The 2015 joint statement covered more points of bilateral agenda development including trade and investment, energy, education, science and technology, culture, tourism and people-to-people -people contact, space, defense, security and disaster management apart from international and regional issues. Interestingly, the 2015 declaration was the first time that the idea of developing cooperation between Russian and Indian commercial banks was explored. Putin and Modi's summit in Goa in October 2016 was called triumphant due to the signing of a deal for S-400 Triumph air missile systems. However, despite the progress in the defence sector alongside new deals in energy, the joint statement acknowledged that it would be difficult to realise the target set at the annual summit in December 2014 to increase annual bilateral trade and investment. See, one of the main problems in Russia-India relations, which are otherwise historical in nature and which are otherwise uh, you know, um, long-standing in nature, 
um, is that we have not been able to move out of traditional areas like defense and nuclear um, cooperation. And one of the things that uh, this government has talked about and Prime Minister in fact talked about in his departing statement that the ambition is to make this relationship much wider, much bro have a much broader base. So you need uh, investments in areas, uh, in new areas, you need partnerships in new areas. Uh, and I think economically Indo-Russian relationship uh, is not very robust. We are almost around 9, between 9 and 10 billion, the trade is very minimal uh, and uh, this is not sustainable. So as India looks for uh, greater investment opportunities and India looks for expanding its economic cooperation, uh, even in energy sector for example, as India looks for greater investment in Russia, uh, this forum will provide a very good impetus. The Petersburg Declaration in 2017 was signed to mark 70 years of Indo-Russian diplomatic ties. The declaration called the vision for the 21st century saw signing of 12 agreements in economic and political areas. Major agreements were signed during the annual India-Russia Summit 2018, including an agreement to increase mutual investments up to $15 billion MOUs on space cooperation, small industries, fertilizers and railways were also signed. Nuclear power issues, uh, Russia has established a large number of nuclear reactors here, a large number of nuclear power plants here. In Kudan Kulam, six uh, power plants are uh, uh, on the anvil, two of them are already working and also in the area of defense. So what it is really required to do is move beyond that. So a five-year road map for cooperation and collaboration in the area of oil and gas that has been signed and that is going to give a huge fillip to bilateral ties. There are a large number of agreements and MOUs and letters of intent that have been signed today after the bilateral talks between India and Russia, between Prime Minister Modi and President Putin, both between public sector undertakings and the private sector, as well as between the two governments. So this is all going to uh, give a huge push to bilateral ties. In the international arena, both countries have similar positions and coordinate their actions. Both nations cooperate closely within the United Nations, BRICS and G20 groupings as well as in the various structures in the Asia-Pacific region such as ASEAN and the East Asia Summit Forum. Russia supported India's membership to the SCO and India was admitted as a full member of the grouping in 2017. India and Russia have identified several new areas of cooperation ranging from deep sea exploration to building knowledge based economies based on innovation, robotics and artificial intelligence, agriculture and people to people contacts. Special focus will be given to cooperation between the younger generation and cultural sphere. Relations between India and Russia are rooted in history, mutual trust and mutually beneficial cooperation. This is a strategic partnership that has withstood the test of time and which enjoys the support of the people of both countries. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. India is the world's largest democracy and according to the UN estimates, its population is expected to overtake China's in 2028 to become the most populous nation. As a rising economic powerhouse and nuclear armed state, India has in recent years emerged as an important regional power. Its demographic dividend and geographical position makes India a favourable region partner for several countries. Let's now understand India's growing stature on the global stage and what is expected for the future. India has the advantage of being in the cultural region of the Indian Ocean, a zone that has unprecedented potential for growth in the scale of transoceanic commerce. That's because many Eurasian and increasingly Afro-Asian sea trade routes 
pass through or close to the Indian territorial waters. The vast resources of the country sustain a massive population, with the latter giving India a huge demographic advantage. India has the world's second largest population. A very large number of India's population, about 50%, is below the age of 24. This provides the country with a large workforce for the coming several decades, helping in its growth. Another factor in favour of India is that it is a democracy and this has enabled it to improve its ties with other democratic nations. India has close ties with several world powers like the European Union, Japan, Russia and the United States. The country has also developed relationships with the African Union, particularly South Africa, the Arab world, Southeast Asia, Israel and South American nations, particularly Brazil. And the government is working on its ties with China. There are many meanings uh, to what, what is happening. One is, of course, that uh, you know, India's stature in, in global politics has risen. Uh, after all, if India will become a $5 trillion economy over the next five years, then uh, all platforms would like India's participation. All platforms would like that India be a very important part of that discussion. And also the fact that no conversation today in global politics can happen uh, without India being an important part of that conversation. You can take global warming, you can take climate change, you can take in, in, new global economic architecture, you can take uh, global governance, any aspect of global governance. Uh, I, I don't think any conversation is possible unless India is in, in, in inside the table, India is part of the table. Um, and so you are right that we have seen recent G7 summit where India was a special invitee. We have seen in Eastern Economic Forum where Mr. Modi is the chief guest that there is an uh, attempt to bring India into these conversations, to use India's economic power uh, to, to, to its advantage, to, to the advantage of various platforms. But also in this particular case, I think it is also about India and Russia trying to reimagine a new relationship for themselves. Historically, India was one of the founding members of the non-aligned movement. That was then, in the Cold War era. Now, India is an active member of the Commonwealth and the WTO, is part of the G20 group of nations, has formed a grouping with Brazil, Russia, China and South Africa in BRICS and recently became a part of the SCO. India's growing stature is reflected in the country's presence in these international fora. The government recently set a target of turning India into a $5 trillion economy. Currently, we are one of the world's fastest growing major economies. Once the target of becoming a $5 trillion economy is achieved, India's standing on the global political stage will go up even further. With inputs from Vipul Agrawal, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's all we have for you in this edition of Intel. We will be back same time tomorrow with a focus on some other subject. In case you missed the television broadcast, you can also watch our program online on YouTube, the link for which is given below. Suggestions and feedback about the program are also welcome. Thank you for watching.